Hello, welcome back. Yes, today it's all about game master preparation. That's right, map making. Maps for locations. That is the topic for today. Now, I've put out a poll and asked people about, like, would they like me to do some map making on my channel? So I'm, I'm going to be sharing some stuff with you today. So I thought I've been sitting on this for a while, and uh, rather than it collecting dust, I suppose I should just share it with everybody else. So when you see this before you, this here is one of my map making books. It's a notebook, it's a hardcover, and I've got a whole lot of maps in it, so I'm going to share them with you today. Uh, particularly at the end of the presentation. So I'm going to put up a poll, feel free to take part in that poll. Grab some food, some drink, make sure you're comfortable. And um, I'm going to go through the, the process with you. Well, at least my process, I wouldn't say the process, but my process. Anyway. Now that that's been done, um, <clears throat> hopefully I can get through this without choking on myself, but you never know, these things can happen. Anyway, let's see if we can do this. Uh, hi, welcome to How to RPG. My name is Fred Wheeler, and today I want to talk about role-playing games. And the topic for today is Game Master Preparation Lesson four, creating locations, which surprisingly probably means talking about mapping. So what are we covering today? Well, I'm going to be going over and my overview for today is inspiration for creating locations, how to create locations, your location details and information, specific location layout. And instead of doing a specific location layout today, I'm going to share and show you some of my maps that I've hand drawn. These are really just rough, rough sketch. They are basic ideas. They are not complete. They are the beginning of what will become a, a map uh, that's a bit more involved, should I decide to do so. Miscellaneous recommendations, because we need to have that. Okay, what are my objectives? Explain how to build a adventure location for a role-playing game. Demonstrate how to build that adventure location. Um, I'm going to do that today. And allow practice example specific adventure locations, things like that. Now, there, there might be some opportunity to at least share. I don't know about practice today, but certainly share ideas for those of you who are interested. Okay, let's go straight to the first topic, and that's inspiration for creating locations. Where do we get them from? How do we do that? What's the process? Well, the process can be different for everybody, but I would recommend using real-world architecture and landmarks as a starting point. Find an image of a historical building, a structure, an area, and use that, and you draw out or base your location off that first. You can use books and movies. They offer many landscapes and places that are quite exotic that you can port over and create a location for your adventure. Video games are great because um, RPG video games have a play experience that usually presents quite dynamic environments that you can explore. So that means that's a wide... Um, option uh, like you can port over a lot of what they're trying to do into your into your adventure now where are they getting that from well they're getting that from real world um, physio physiological environments they're getting that from from role-playing games so a lot of video games are based off real world and you know just other tabletop role-playing games pictures paintings landscape artwork done in oil acrylic watercolor all of these things even pencil charcoal can be quite useful for actually building out a location uh, pre-made role-playing game published adventures have many locations they include maps quite often in fact they almost always do so you can use those too to supplement what you're trying to do with your location it doesn't need to be original you just need to be able to use it and then Google search, Pinterest, ArtStation, DeviantArt. If you're looking for images of locations, it might give you an idea of what you could do with something. There's a, another place you can go. So the inspiration is lots of different places to, to get your ideas from. Okay, <clears throat> how do we create locations? What's the process of doing that? Well, using real world architecture, plans, layout, uh, deck plans for ships, floor plans for buildings and ruins, I've said this before. Okay, so that's certainly where I think you should start. Then check out something like Sly Flourish's fantastic locations, and here's a preparation method. When he's creating a location, he had, and it's boiled down to this one sentence. 
whatever you're trying to do, if you want to make it fantastic and you want it for a fantasy location or a science fiction location, make it old, make it large, give it unique features, give it a function, and give it an interesting name. And if you can do that, you're doing all right. Focus on making the location a reusable set piece is really helpful for future preparation because many uh, locations that you use in, a, in any kind of adventure, they tend to repeat themselves. Like you might use the same village or town or city or castle, um, a stronghold of some kind, the same tomb or the same tomb layout. Pyramids tend to be designed exactly the same way. Mazes will be different but you, nothing will stop you from just going and getting an activity book with a whole lot of mazes in and just porting them over. A temple tends to have the same structure. A shrine, a mine, depending on the type of mine, there's only so many different structures for a mine and usually most people are using a mine that is a bell shape, bored straight down into the ground because every other mine is really not that very exciting to explore so you wouldn't use it. Cave locations, monster layers tend to be the same. Uh, the Death Trap Dungeon can be very different, but structurally they are the same. They follow the same principles. Uh, the Treasure Vault will look very similar. Sailing ships have the same structure. You don't really make sailing ships completely different every single time. You know, they have decks, they have certain locations, they have a galley, they have a place to sleep, you know, things like that. Uh, ensure the location is interactive for your player characters because it's the tool for one of the three pillars of playing a game, or any of the pillars really, and that's exploring the location. It's one of the strongest aspects of uh, role-playing games is exploration. Going to find something that what you didn't know about before. Draw a picture with digital tools or paper and pencil. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to suggest to you that your first port of call is probably going to be paper and then a pen or a pencil. A pencil is probably smarter because you can rub it out, but you can use a pen. Uh, drawing a digital image requires learning software and Maybe that's the second um, port of call, after you've got something that you like. Change what you need or what you want to change for your adventure. So you can use something that exists and you redraw it. Label the map and the location. And that gives you pretty much all of the different things that you need for it. Now, the Game Master's Book of Random Encounters has a lot of locations. The whole book is all about that, plus a couple of uh, short adventures. But... The book is all about just giving you lots of reusable locations. And then Pathfinder Role Playing Game, the Game Mastery Guide, has a bunch of information on different locations. This is not so much maps, but very general ideas, a lot of tables. Wally DM's Journal of Puzzle Encounters, an excellent book, because it will give you a lot of things that you can port into your location, but he also has a table of 100 unique sort of dungeon rooms from page uh, 76 to 79. Uh, and then you have the Dungeon Master Guide for D&D 5e. It has some useful information in there as well, near the back particularly, around uh, different locations and how to build them. It is unfortunately devoid of information about marking and drawing out on a map. They, they, they have forget, failed to incorporate that information, which is a little ridiculous, but we'll, we'll deal with that. Don't worry. Okay. Location, details, and information. So what do we need to do here? Okay, so who created the location that you're dealing with? And you can get a lot of ideas from the game uh, Dungeon Master Guide. Many dun Dungeon Master Guides have plenty of ideas around this. And what is the purpose of your location? Okay, what is it being used for? Is it a mine? Is it used for mining gold? Or is it used for something else? Uh, what is the history of that location? Why is that location important? <clears throat> and then... When we look at some of the other questions we might ask is right now, who inhabits that location? What is the general population of the location you have created? Where do you position your hazards and obstacles in that location? Now this might be things like traps, puzzles, natural hazards. Uh, all of these things come into play with your environment, your location. And then how do you dress your environmental um, a place. So the environmental dressing, like is it covered in rocks or trees? What sort of objects are there? What sort of furniture, if you if it's indoors? Add any features to the location that, that you might be able to interact with or manipulate. Um, 
So remember, you still want to focus on the exploration aspect and environmental or dungeon dressing is really important in making that possible. Now that seems pretty simple, right? Like, okay, if I get all that right, then I should be able to get anything done. Well, the problem is with locations, getting the basic idea is not the hard thing. Doing it well takes practice. That's, that's a fact. It just is. It's just a fact. So you don't have to be good at drawing a location map because you're not trying to sell it on the market. Or maybe you are, and if you are, then you shouldn't be here listening to me. <laughs> but if you are trying to sell something on the market, then you need to be doing a lot more research than you're doing right now. This video isn't going to do it. Okay, but if you're just dealing with your own game, like you don't have to be really good. The map is there for you and your group, not for the wider community. It's not necessary to use or learn map making or drawing software because there are alternative methods. You can cannibalize somebody else's maps, okay, or locations. You can um, copy parts of them and alter them, or you could simply draw the thing yourself. It is, in fact, not that difficult. If you can draw a line, you can draw a map. It's one of the things that I've always been taught by my mum, and she's into art, and that is, if you can draw a line, you can draw, okay? <laughs> art is just about putting lines in a particular position. And dra drawing a map is exactly the same thing. There are so many different maps that have been made for a fantasy location. You can steal most of them or borrow them, borrow existing stuff. You don't actually have to even draw them yourself because somebody's probably done every map there is to, to, to think of. Um, and when you do your own map, it, it's pretty much going to follow one of the, a lot of the, the traditional um, uh, processes and methods that have been used before. Because, you know, if you're doing anything, if you're going to draw a map and it's going to be a map of a torture chamber, there's going to have some cer certain things there. There's going to be some cages in there. There's going to be some torture equipment. There's going to be a door to get into it. It's probably not going to have a window. You know, so they all follow generally the same sort of process. Now, I'm hoping that this was useful to you, and if it was, fantastic. Please give it a go. Even if you don't draw your own maps, at least create your own locations. You can do this, or at least modify something. Okay? Do your own thing. This is what this is all about. This program is all about getting you to do your own thing. So I want to thank my patrons who support me on Patreon. I want to thank you for listening and watching. Um, all the best with your endeavors, and hey, till next time, keep rolling those 20s. Okay, <clears throat> so I'm going to go to the chat very briefly, and once I've gone to the chat and I've done that little bit, um, we're going to go straight over, and I'm going to open up my, I'm going to just move this stuff out of the way a little bit, um, and I'm going to show you what's in my my map book. This this is not the only notepad that I have or notebook, hardcover notebook that I have maps in. It's not the first time I've done this. I've I've been sharing what I do in terms of maps for a while, and um, so do do not expect perfection or brilliance because this is just the starting sketches. These are just the starting ideas. And the, one of the things you'll discover is if you're doing maps, it always comes, it always should, it's generally going to start, for me at least, it starts with a rough sketch, a rough sketch, a rough drawing, a basic idea, and a few notes. And that's usually what I start with. And then if I want to make a really good map, I might redraw it by hand. And if I want to make a digital version, then I'll find some software and I'll draw it using the original sketches or concept drawings that I made for whatever the map location is. And <clears throat> there is a thing, it's 2023, and there was a, um, a sort of like a, a challenge put forward called Dungeon 23. Now it started off with a bang. A lot of people were doing Dungeon 23, doing a great job, trying to keep up with it, and they've fallen off. Now I'm one of those people, I've fallen off, but surprisingly I do have quite a few uh, doing 365 different map locations or rooms is a hard task to follow 
if you're doing one every single day, it's really quite difficult to keep going, particularly with everything else that goes on in your life. Now, if you're a game designer, it's probably not a big deal. Um, but the problem is everybody who does this always winds up doing too much, right? You wind up drawing it, you wind up drawing, uh, writing a description, you try, you try putting stuff inside it, and really maybe that's just trying to, it's going to take too long, okay? Um, so I'm going to show you this in a second, but let's go through the chat. And uh, I, want to, I want to talk about uh, my endeavors with Dungeon 23. Uh, I did get beyond doing 80 rooms or locations, and then I just could not keep up anymore. What I do find is it's really nice to be able to sit under a tree at the beach or in a park with a notepad and a pencil or a pen or both, and maybe even a ruler if I need it, and just draw maps and listen to music or... Uh, something or just listen to the birds just do my own thing okay fred huber hello fred huber is a patron thank you for being here all kinds of fun to me um fun, fun ways to make maps yes there are absolutely I, I totally agree i totally agree and of course i can't see your comment the rest of it because it's disappeared underneath the pole <laughs> sorry fred big kid is a moderator and a patron thank you for being here oh Pardon me, people, I'm having a really hard day. <laughs> you don't know how bad it's been, really bad. My maps are always um, scattered terrain and usually a big piece um, I was able to find or print. So what Big Kid is talking about, his, he does he does a lot of 3D printing, so he prints out terrain. Uh, if I need more, I use wooden blocks to stand in for bigger structures, which makes perfect sense, absolutely. So you construct your maps as you go. There is no, there is no necessarily no set plan. You're just going to lay things out, and if it looks about right, that's good enough. Fine. Um, I link weather to an appropriate real world location. Okay, at some point in the past. Uh, okay, then I can give weather reports. It's not uh, rune, RuneScape. The sun isn't always shining. Okay. Well, I mean, I mean, I, I suppose weather is a is an aspect of location for sure. Hello, Norok. Norok is also a patron. How are you? Uh, greetings, yes. So what do you got here? Esper has a few old videos on drawing maps. Um, good resources. Yeah, Esper's also a, a perfectionist. And not only is Esper a perfectionist, he's very good at what he does. Um, <clears throat> I'm probably not that kind of person. I'm just not that sort of person. But I do draw maps. I, I, and then, yeah, the, the shocking thing is, and you're going to find out very shortly just how bad it is, but let's get to the bottom of this chat and let's move, move on. Um, making maps is always fun time. It is time consuming. It is. Yeah, absolutely. I went through 13 iterations of my map world. So, yeah, I, I've, I've learned to accept that because I create so many worlds, I don't need to worry about getting too worried about that sort of stuff. Which is why I do it in about 30 seconds. A big, quick, rough sketch and that's it. Um, if I am drawing my own, they start on graph paper. Then I redraw on basic drawing, on a drawing program. Um, it took a while for me to make uh, X crit. Okay, so let's 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 go straight over to where, where we need to be. Which is, let's have a look at what's in this notebook book that I've got. And <clears throat> so before you, you see the book of layers. And the book of layers... Every invention here is about four pages long, which takes about anywhere from, depending how fast you read, five minutes to 20 minutes to prepare. And every single location, or every single adventure has a location map. It might be extensive, it might be short, but it's a good example of the sort of thing that you can do yourself, right? Now, they're all done pretty because they're done for publication, but I wanted to show you this book because I think it's an excellent book. They should be making more of these. Four pages with a map, perfect. Let's move that other way. <clears throat> this is the Game Master Book of Random Encounters. And the Book of Random Encounters is full of location maps. Different locations, things that you can use, that you'll reuse. And that's, that's a huge use to you. So you don't have to draw it yourself. But that's not why you're here. You're here because apparently Fred has this little rinky-dinky notebook here that's got his own stuff in here. So <clears throat> this is uh, this is what I have. Now, I'm, I'm sorry if I haven't been able to zoom in. Maybe I can do that. Can I do a... 
I wonder if I can do that. Can I just stretch it and just pull it across so that you can see a little bit closer? Oh, can I do that again? Just, I'll see if I can do that. I'll see if I can make it a little bit bigger because you can't see very much at that at that distance, can you? Okay, let's try and transition over. But uh sweet. Okay, I'm going to keep an eye on chat as I go. And um, <clears throat> he says, <laughs> "There's my mark." So this is my. This was book one. I have book two as well. Book two is not finished. So this is dungeon twenty three. This was the challenge that was put forward: building a mega dungeon, essentially, three hundred and sixty five rooms or locations. So each month of the year for 2023. And for me, I decided every month of the year was going to be a level, a different area, a different general area. And <clears throat> and I was just going to focus on rooms and locations and that's it. And I was going to write like a short description. So that's what I put down. Um, and uh, Sean McCoy was the, the guy who started this all off. So here's the thing. I started doing far more than I should. This is all done in pen. So to give you an idea of what I was doing is usually I'd start off with a ruler and a pencil. Sometimes I didn't use a ruler. Sometimes I just used a pencil. I would draw in the basic structure and then I would go over and use a pen. This takes time. So this is the, the clockwork lion den. And uh, for this location, it's got some double doors up here, some statues, a pillow, um, some pot plants. And I decided that my description was going to be super simple. Room one, a cybernetic clockwork line is curled up on a pillow, which would be right here. I wanted there to be a monster or a creature, a construct tied to this location. And then I have on the back, I can, you can see I have a lot of notes. Now, these notes took a little while, and because you start writing up notes on something, then you have to, you, you wind up having to fill out more. So I, I talk about, you know, what I'm going to, what monster am I going to use from the monster manual for my cybernetic clockwork line? So page 331. Um, a large brown pillow and an alcove. I just wanted to describe what color it was. Very simple. Quick notes. Nothing, it's not like professional, it's just, it's note form bullet pointed or or even just numbered numbers is easy to find out find right so you know what you're up to i decided to include a small clockwork mouth hiding in the den um, i decided the double doors were going to be made out of bronze and they were going to be locked i uh, also decided that the two um, lion head um, humanoid statues so the statues are actually lion headed humanoids and <clears throat> they would be by those double doors i decided the three pot plants would have catnip growing inside in them okay that were against the wall uh, so I started to add in more and more detail and as soon as you start thinking about these things it's fun but it takes time so I didn't get a lot done with the first map it took me quite a while trying to find the time to get it done um, I included the single door I decided it would be iron and wood and it would be unlocked um, I decided the the room was about 70 feet long and about 45 feet wide um, because there's no squares on here, and I, it's if you go having to look for a book that's got squares in it, you wind up. I find you wind up getting a soft covered book, and I find that the soft covered notebooks do not last as long as the hard covered notebooks. And even though the hard covered notebook costs me about two dollars in New Zealand, that's a fairly minimal price for something that I know will last me a little while. And I keep using it, right? You know, there's so many pages in it, I keep using it over and over again, gets worn out, and if it was soft cover, it would just get torn to shreds. So that's why I've been using the hard covers and finding the cheapest hard cover I can, really, um, of a reasonable quality. I decided that the floor would be covered in, in straw, and the clockwork line is sort of the, the chamber's guardian. And I decided the cybernetic line is, uh, is looking for the clockwork mouse. Somewhere in that, that chamber is a clockwork mouse, and the lion is looking for it. But it's... Will it find it or get distracted by the catnip in the pot plants? So that was my first location. You can see right now by this, <laughs> if you try to do every single room or every single location like this, there's going to be a problem. You're never going to get it finished. 
One of the great things though I've discovered uh, as I was doing this is that by doing a single room on a single page, I can take a single room and I can transplant it into any new location I might need. One of the things I love about the fact that Dungeon 23 insisted on us doing a single room or location is that I could port over and use them like a Lego brick. Put them one, one, one here, one there. I could put, I could use, reuse something. If I liked a location, I could reuse it easily. So this here is the the Clockwork a, um, Avery. This is room two. Um, I decided to have a, a water pond in the center. I had some double doors and single doors. It's a semi-circular shape, so it's a little bit odd, and it has. Um, uh, clockwork birds singing on perches in this room all over the place so if you've ever been into an aviary just imagine that but it's all made out of metal metal birds clockwork birds and i did a whole lot of information again i wrote up a whole lot of information things like how big the high high how high the ceiling was how big the space is uh, what sort of colored um, clockwork birds there are uh, whether they're flying around or perched on on on, on something um, I decided how deep the, the water pond would be, so I actually put that in. I put some clockwork fish into the water pond in the middle of the room. So I, 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 I tricked it out with a lot of different things. Um, I also put down a broken clockwork bird is on the ground and can be fixed with a uh, mending, mending magic or a tinker's tools, a set of tools. So I was trying to figure out how to do this in such a way where I could reuse it and I wanted to make it interesting. And once you start going down this road, it, it, it really does. It gets it, now. You can see the map. The map is pretty basic. It is just some lines, circle, roughly drawn. I, I've, I've done some hatching, but really the hatching is you no. Know, you know what the great thing about doing hatching on a map is? It's brainless. It's so easy to do, and it's kind of therapeutic. You sit there and you just draw lines, and at the end of like you think, oh, that kind of looked better than it did before, and if it didn't look better than before. The process was quite a, quite a soothing. <laughs> um, it's a weird thing, I, I, I admit. Um, I decided to include that, you know, if you played musical instruments or sing a song, that the um, it would calm down the clockwork birds because they like singing. I decided the doors would be bronze again. And I decided the, uh, the, the water pond was kind of like a fountain or a wishing well. So there should be gold coins in there that you could fish out if you wanted to. So lots of stuff was going on here. Okay. Now, I, would, I could go over and explain every single one, but I'm not. Now I'm going to just flick through here very quickly. And you'll start to see, and I'm probably going to point out the ones that I think you could reuse. I've just shown you two that I don't think are going to get reused that often. You know, the Lion's Den and the Clockwork Avery, probably not something you're going to reuse. But by making a single location, single room, it is like a jigsaw puzzle that you can just fit together. Okay, so drink of water. And then we're going to flick through the whole thing fairly quickly. And then I'll go back and talk about anything you would like me to talk about, if you're interested. Okay, we have the trophy chamber. I figured the trophy chambers are a big thing. Like, that's like animal heads on the wall. So this is what I've done here. Okay, I haven't done it. I haven't drawn anything fancy. I've just put, I've just put things that I thought would, this would indicate this is a, a trophy head on the wall. Okay, an animal head. Um, this is the, the bronze smithy. So this is just a blacksmith. It's just for bronze. So you could reuse that. It's got a forge location. I've just drawn a, a semicircle for that. And, an anvil, a very rough anvil. I've got a walk water bucket. I've got a tool rack. I've got a door leading into it. There's not a lot of space here, but it doesn't need to because it's, it's really designed for just one person, right? So there's my blacksmith. And then we have a, and then you'd use a blacksmith again. You, you would reuse that. Even a trophy chamber you could reuse. The seashell lavatory. Now, for those of you who are aware, I have a thing about putting toilets in my role-playing games, and yes, this is a toilet. <laughs> I've drawn the toilet, I've put the three seashells along the side on a shelf. Now, it doesn't look like seashells, I, I'm totally aware. But if you've ever watched Demolition Man and you get the joke, I could not resist putting seashells into here, okay? Uh, would you reuse a toilet in your maps? I have no idea, but I know I will. It's not about you, it's about me. <laughs> I will reuse the toilet, don't you worry. <laughs> we have the well, so a bronze well. We have a ladder leading down into it. Um, I've got some depth to it. So, But a well is just a circle. That's all it is. It's very simple to draw. 
whether you have bricks, whether it's made out of concrete, whether it's whatever it's made out of, made out of wood, uh, maybe it's just earth, a well, it's just basically a circle. So you can reuse that. And that's an access point to something, whether that's the bottom of the well or an access point to something else. Um, storage rooms. You're going to reuse storage rooms till the cows go home. What's that storage room? Let's get real. Storage rooms are just basically a rectangle or a square. That, that's it. They usually, that's all they are. So there's, no, there's never been anything that sort of suggests they need to be fancy. Hello, um, Murray Shack. How's it going? Awareness. Hello, awareness. How are you doing? That's right. Don't forget the seashells. Anyway, back to storage rooms. <laughs> um, so I decided, what would you find? You would find barrels. Barrels are just circles. Yeah. Crates are just square. And you just fill it up with those things. That's it. I don't have to do very much to it. <laughs> what happens in the toilet stays in the toilet. Exactly. Well, you would hope so anyway. So you would definitely reuse the storage room, whether it's got double doors or it's got a single door, okay? That, it doesn't matter, but you would reuse that. So drawing one of those makes sense. Why would you not do that one? Then we have the bronze antechamber. Now, an antechamber is basically like a chamber where uh, when somebody dies, they store all of the stuff that they had in life. Um, it's quite often what it's used for. And, you know, if you look at the old um, Egyptian pharaohs, this is what the antechamber was usually like. It was a room. It was either a square or rectangle. It wasn't a particularly large room. It would often have, at the end here, I have a secret door. It's not a secret wall. So the wall has to be broken through. There is no secret door that you just open up. You'd actually have to bash your way through the plaster that's covered at the end. That's why it's got a line and an S and it says secret wall. Um, the room is completely cluttered. Why is the room cluttered? Because they try to jam everything that they possessed in life in here. There's a couple of boats, there's a, a throne, there's a bed, there's some crates, there's some statues, there's a chandelier, and, you know, um, and, and, and all it is is just circles, squares, rectangles, odd-shaped things, um, anything that you thought, sort of think. It, you know, it could be just coins on the floor, for all you know. So it's just full of shapes. Okay, this looks like a throne, this is kind of like a bed, this is kind of like a boat, here's a boat and a boat. Uh, you could put a loom in there, so if you know what a loom looks like, this is my idea of what a loom looks like. Nothing fancy, okay? Would I reuse an antechamber? If you're dealing with a tomb, you know, any kind of tomb where somebody's buried, yes, you would reuse an antechamber, so you really, you've drawn this for the last time, you just do it once. This is how antechambers are structured. Uh, what do you got here? What happens? Oh, no, I, I cast and animate objects on the turds. Oh, well, good for you. <laughs> I'd go back to um, and go broke on fines to get uh, TP tickets. I have no idea what we're talking about there. <laughs> Next, the study. You're going to reuse a study. So I had to draw a study, right? Clockwork study in this case. I called it the clockwork study. Got some bookshelves on the side. We've got a secret secret um, panel behind one of the bookshelves that you could access. We've got a desk, some che a chair, uh, a couple of statues, a pot plant. There's a door to get in. I mean, most studies look pretty much the same. No, you can't. No, you can't walk around. The idea with an antechamber is you have to empty the antechamber to get in. If you want to get in and have a good look around, you actually have to take the stuff out. Okay. <laughs> Right, study, and you'll reuse the study. A bedroom, you're always going to reuse bedrooms. So what's a bedroom? A door, a bed, a closet, a, a, a dresser or a chest, and maybe a, a pot plant or a, um, a hat stand. Who knows? I don't know what you, what do you have in your bedroom? I don't know. Maybe this is, <laughs> could be a, um, <clears throat> a, por a, a porta pot. It could be for having taken a leak and doing your business. I mean, that was quite a common thing, right? <laughs> you have a porta pot. Uh, so it doesn't have to be a pot plant. Or maybe you just do your business in the pot plant. And either it grows really well or it dies. I don't know. <laughs> the tinker's bedroom. So you reuse bedrooms. Now, a gallery where... Now, when I did this, I was thinking in terms of... Um, Batman Begins, and that ridiculous room that he has that is just full of suits of armor that are just horrendous. 
and I just draw different circles and shapes to represent what they would look like when you're looking down on them. So they're supposed to represent different types of armor suits, and that's exactly what it is. Um, and I've gone with gold. So a single door at each end so you can go through. I decided that I didn't want to have a mirror at the other side because it was too much on the nose, but you would reuse a gallery. Moving through a gallery, you'd reuse it. We have pot plant, what are you smoking in your study? Well, that's a good point. Um, awareness. So you're going to reuse a gallery, so draw a gallery, an observatory. So this is basically a big, huge telescope on a, a stand and with a little chair attached to it. Uh, that's what that's supposed to represent here. And of course, we've got a semicircle because a lot of observatories kind of feel like they have sort of like a, a cylindrical effect, a cylindrical shape or a, a sphere shape to them. I decided to go half circle or semicircle and give a couple of single single doors either side. And then back here we've got some statues. And uh, for the life of me, I think this is just supposed to be a, um, a an unusual bookshelf or a, a shelf for storing stuff that's sort of shaped to the, the wall because everything's curved. Um, so you'd reuse something like that. Uh, we have the gauntlet hall or the, the hall of death. And this is where... This is where usually there are statues lined along and you've got to go through one door, get to the other side without dying. And usually there's going to be traps that throw out fire and stuff like that. So the, the gauntlet hallway, I had to draw that. You'll be familiar with this if you've seen or played anything um, in the Underdark, uh, not the Underdark, in um, um, the Halls of Undermountain. Undermountain is a, a good example. It has a hallway that looks almost identical. It's just a lot longer. You re you reuse that. Gauntlet hallways are always necessary. Well, I, I did put a lot of work into it, but 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 again, now you'll notice that I stopped doing notes at one point. So there was notes for this, and then I stopped doing notes here, and there's nothing here, and the gauntlet hallway, there's nothing. I haven't written anything. There's no details in the gauntlet hallway. I will put them in, I hope, in the future. <laughs> I really do hope in the future I will. Uh, we have the bronze crypt. So a crypt is really just uh, a place where you put bodies to decay and rest, and it has multiple um, places to put them. So I decided I would have some stone sarcophagi running down the center, and some double doors either side, and then some sort of shelving to store a couple of more bodies. Um, they could just lay the, the corpse on, or the mummified corpse on. And that's really kind of what a, an, an open crypt would look like. And so I decided that would be the shape I would, this is how I'd lay it out. You're going to use crypts. Crypts can be quite long. They don't have to be as short as this one, but I needed to fit it on my page. Um, okay, next. And you would reuse that. I didn't do any notes for it. Um, a bronze mine entrance. So in a mine, whether you have double doors to it or it's just an open cave, it's up to you. I decided I was going to go with some double doors, a few crates and boxes. And this here is supposed to represent the, um, what's, the what's the word? Uh, it's sort of like a shack with a couple of beds um, and a desk. Uh, I know with a bed and a desk and, a, and sort of like a, a storage cabinet in the corner. And that's, that's just to represent, um, you know, there's got to be somebody living there to keep an eye on the, the entrance to the, the mine. That would be your security. Your security guard would be there. Something like that. What do you got here? Um, a personal choice. I have the notes, if any, on the facing page, so both maps and note are visible at the same time. Uh, Fred, I, I did think about that, but then in the end, I decided not to worry about it. Um, because initially, when I was doing this, Fred, this is how it worked for me. I was going to draw a map, do a description, that was it. And then I looked on the back page and I was like, well, I can't draw another map because it's going to bleed through. And so I started writing notes on the map. I wasn't actually going to do anything with this back page initially. But I, I, I did start doing that. Um, for, not for all of them, but for, certainly for some of them. So it wasn't, it wasn't the intention to have two pages of information. A drawing of the room, a description, and information or details on the room. It was never my intention to do that. But that's what wound up happening as a product of the way things just went okay so um, and if you want to do it that way that's cool but I was never intending to do that and so I, you know okay next um, 
So the mine entrance. Now you probably won't necessarily use that exact mine entrance again, but you may, may maybe you will. I decided to have an arcane game, an arcade game room. So I drew a, a room shape for it. I put in some arcade machines and I guess I I suppose these are hockey tables, air hockey tables or table tennis tables or something like that. Um, something yeah, I just what would they look like if you looked down? And and so I drew that in. And so this was supposed to be sort of clockwork, you know, game tables or game machines that you could play with. Um, and I know it doesn't necessarily fit into a fantasy world. Now, are you talking about what do I draw my maps on if I'm using a pen or a pencil? Because it's paper if you're asking me that question. But um, are you are you asking me what software do I use? So if if you want to know what software I use for drawing maps, I will tell you, but you need to let me know if that's it's the software drawing program that you want to know rather than just me drawing on paper. Because it's basically just lined paper. It's cheap. What's the best type of notes for a tomb? Cryptic notes. I, I actually find I find notes on one of the things that it has become really obvious to me is if you have reusable rooms and locations and they're divided up into just a single room or location and they do become reusable, you need to understand that type of location. So what would you find in a, in a study? And being able to have a list of things that you would find in a study is super useful because it goes right back to the exploration thing. If you go into, say, an arcade room, what would you find? Well, you would find gaming um, machines, wouldn't you? You might find a ball. You might find a pedal. Um, you might find coins. So being able to... So you don't permanently draw maps, IRL. Uh, here's the thing. For every map that I draw, I very rarely use them. I might, but I very rarely use maps that I draw. For every, I don't know, 100 maps I draw, I might use one or two. Th that's, that's generally been my approach. I'm trying to work towards not doing that because that tends to be a problem where you, you draw a map, you think you put it away for later on, it doesn't get used for whatever reason and you don't wind up using it because they don't go there or something like that and you go, I'm going to use it later on. So quite often I find myself drawing a lot of maps but that they don't actually get used. So I, I will, I, so one of the things I do do is I will, if I draw maps and I, I need something, um, then I then I will use notebooks, yes. But what I find is if I've drawn the map before, I can redraw it from my memory. I usually remember, I, I drew a map like that in the past, so if I need to draw one up right there on the spot, I can. You, you, what you, one of the things you'll, you'll discover is when you draw maps, You'll you probably use very few of them, unless you're specifically drawing it for an adventure. Specifically for an adventure. If you're deliberately drawing something for an adventure that you're running right there and then, not, not for the future, but right then and then, those you'll use. But when you draw maps outside of game time, I find, uh, quite often I find I don't use them again. But because I've drawn it before, I remember what it looked like and I can redraw it when I need to, on the spot. So I do a lot of my stuff by hand. I don't use software that often. If you want to know about software, I've been resorting to using the easiest pieces of software I can. So I use um, Paint, 3D Paint, and I use um, Dungeon Scroll. And I'll show you Dungeon Scroll if you want. But anyway, we need to move through this because there's about 80 blooming rooms here. We're only on it, room six. Yeah, I have a huge stack of map books in the corner, essentially. Yes, that's exactly right. Gathering dust. <laughs> this thing hasn't seen the light of day for a while, at least since the beginning of the year. <laughs> uh, okay, what else you got here? I could see that being a problem. Yeah, I brought a, a dry erase um, battle mat and, and draw them on there. 
Well, yeah, I mean that's that's fine, but I yeah, I don't I don't generally draw a lot of my maps to be sort of. They they're just something that all all I need is that, and I can transfer that onto a um, a battle grid. You know, this is a a writable mat right here. It's got hexes, but there's squares on the other side. This is the the big pockets um, AJ Pickett um, silicon battle mat, which is awesome. Uh, but I don't leave them on my my silicon battle mat, okay? Because I'm gonna have to reuse it. I always draw maps in between sessions where I know the players have decided to to go to that location. So Nora, that's exactly what I do. The problem is they don't always go there, so you don't wind up using it. Or even though you drew a map for the location, there wasn't a fight. They dealt with the situation a different way, so you didn't actually have to draw out the map to show them, you just had to describe it. Quite often the only thing I need is a description of the location. And I don't even need to have that book page out. I can describe it off the top of my head. So I don't need to worry about that sort of stuff. Uh, okay, keep keep going, Fred. A waiting room. I decided to have a waiting room with a really long couch um, or chair and a reception desk and some double doors. And I made it triangular just because I wanted to have a triangular waiting room. You're not going to reuse a triangular waiting room. Let's get real. This is Fred just being silly. Um, dining room. Like... You're going to reuse dining rooms all the time. How many dining rooms? What does it look like? Big table, a lot of chairs around side, some access points, usually a service entrance, usually a main entrance way, double doors is probably going to do fine for that. And I mean, this is the type of thing you would reuse all the time because it, you need dining rooms. Um, clockwork kitchen. So a kitchen location. So what I did is I went on the internet, had a look at what the old kitchens look like. And this is where the... the um, I guess the half is, uh, it's it's stone, it's got a hood to um, deal with steam and smoke, it's got some uh, wooden tables, it's got some shelving and some um, benches, it's got some swinging doors, some double doors, and then after that you have your coals, and usually uh, old kitchens had a, um, like a cauldron, uh, uh, and it would be sitting over hot coals, because you can't have an open flame uh, in, a, in a castle, uh, it's dangerous. And in a kitchen where there's lots of oil and fat and so forth, they always were trying to reduce the chance of fire. So hot coals was the best way to go. I found uh, JPGs of the, um, uh, uh, JPEGs of the Lost Modern Fandelva maps and printed them one inch equals one foot. For the game table. Yes, well, I've done that too, as a lot, a lot of you know. <laughs> a lot of you know I've done that. Okay, let's keep going. So I did a bathroom. Of course, you've got to have a bathroom. Got a shower, got myself a bath, basin. I'm going to reuse a bathroom. Maybe you'll never use one. It's like the toilet. <laughs> I decided I, I wanted to have a vault. Does anybody remember Tron and that huge door that they had to open? So I decided I was going to have one huge, thick door that looked, was like a corkscrew that would unwind. And this is what this room is supposed to represent. The room is not very fancy. I didn't even put any treasure in it. I didn't even bother to, to draw in some treasure you could find in here. I didn't even see the point. Um, but the corkscrew idea, I decided how could I duplicate that. And so this is why it kind of looks a bit like a, a wind out corkscrew. Um, a single door that would just unscrew out <laughs> for my, my vault. A treasure vault, essentially. And you're going to use vaults. Treasure vaults are something you'd use all the time. Uh, a food pantry. Now, you may not use pantries. But I just put some shelves in there, some barrels, some sh shelving around the outside. They've got shelves in the middle. Uh, pantry, you reuse a map like that quite a lot. Whether you would have a battle or a fight in a pantry is a different story, but at least you have the structure. And they usually look exactly the same. Yeah. A workshop. I decided I have a workshop. I put in a, uh, I think I put a vice in here and um, a couple of, uh, a press, a drill press, some tools, some scattered um, debris, a workbench or um, table. I decided to make it semicircular rather than the, the rectangular square one. Um, I decided to make it semicircular because I just thought that would be fun. Um, I got into a, a bender where I liked using curves. <laughs> but workshops, you're going to reuse workshops all the time. Uh, a parts warehouse. So I decided I just wanted a big building full of boxes. It's a basically just a, a glorified storage room, right? And I've got a little office in the corner there. Got maybe a, a large door that opens up, allows the, the wagon or the truck or whatever to come in and, 
you can load up and then drive out. Uh, we have a laboratory. I decided I wanted a laboratory, so I went with a, a slightly unusual um, shape. I put in a few um, um, uh, glass bottles with some tubes connecting to them, and I did that on both sides. I decided I wanted a, a few things that were sort of looked like they might have a use, and some tables and some chairs. Very simple. N nothing fancy. It's 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 just giving me an idea of where things are and what it might look like. And then I do my description. The description is actually probably more important. Uh, what do you got here? I run a game entirely theatre of the mind at a local hobby shop. Usually I just improvise rooms as needed. And um, Mershak, that's exactly how I tend to do things too. I tend to just make stuff stuff up as I go. And because I've built and made these rooms before, I, as I said, I remember what they kind of were like, and so I can just pull from that information. A book like this makes um, it easy to track uh, PCs and NPCs' relative position behind a DM screen. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, next, a library. What does a library look like? So I was looking up, like, lo what do libraries look like? And one of the things that became quite obvious is often you have bookshelves in the middle of, a, of the room, the, the room shape is quite, usually it's, it's, it's a weird shape when you look at libraries. Uh, I decided to put library, um, you know, a stack of uh, bookshelves right around the, all the walls because that sort of made sense using every space on the wall. I included a secret door access point. Um, I, I've got a main access point and I put a desk and a chair and that was it. So that somebody can sit down, grab a book and read at the desk in the chair, in the comfy chair. It, so it's not complicated, it's not involved or anything like that. Would I reuse a library? Probably would. Is there enough space to fight in? Again, that might not even come up. It might not even come up. Uh, com combat and theatre of the mind it doesn't work for me. Well, awareness, you don't have to use theatre of the mind. I use theatre of the mind and I use a battle mat. I use both. Whatever works for me at the time and how, however lazy I am at the time too. So this is a danger room. So for those of you who remember the X-Men, I decided to have a danger room. And I always envisaged the danger room to be just a couple of curves. So you could never quite work out what was going on. <laughs> so I did that. And what the heck is going on in the center? I decided that was the, the projection machine or whatever the heck, you know. Because it's, it's usually a projection device of some kind, right? Uh, so this is supposed to be my danger room. Um, and I've got a bit of a description here. I got a lounge, so I just needed to have a couple of lounging chairs. I decided to go with curves, but the room is sort of squarish. A um, couple of access points, and that's it. It's a cuff, some coffee tables. I want to I drink my coffee in here, <laughs> um, or at least throw it at somebody in the middle of a fight. I decided I wanted to have a, a mine elevator, so I just drew a, a cave for my mine, and I drew a, basically a square for my elevator that would go down. It's just a box, and it's got some sliding doors on the front that's it nothing nothing fancy and i wrote out the rest of the information and you'll see that i did go back to doing notes at one point and that starts around about here i decided to have a rubbish dump so this is just basically a a door to a cave chamber and a big hole in the middle is where you dump all of your crap <laughs> you know well not not poop crap but your rubbish like your food scraps and Whatever junk you know no longer need. It, this is goes goes down the big hole. Yep. So we just break um, take a break and draw the the map on a battle mat right before we roll initiative. Yeah, and I I do I do that a lot myself if I decide I can be bothered. Um, next control room. So I decided how often do you need a control room? They come up sometimes. So I decided oh let's draw a control room. I was thinking back to a lot of the old puppet shows that were done, um, like um, Stingray and, what's another one? Uh, oh, Thunderbirds. Thunderbirds is a great example. So what does that look like? And so this room is really just the Thunderbirds control room. <laughs> well, one of the Thunderbirds control rooms. Maybe it's even the Stingray one, I can't remember. So I, I had a, a main sort of um, panel and a chair and a couple of um, supporting um, control panels and chairs to sit at. And that with one exit and uh, one entrance way. That's it. Nothing nothing else. But you use a control room occasionally. Um, a layer entrance. Usually with a layer entrance, I decided 
Lair entrance is usually going to be quite open, quite wide, need a space to get the creature in, and I just leave bones. So that's all it is. It's just a big space, a bit of a um, curve that's been cut out, and there's some bones and scraps left at the very um, um, entrance to the cave because that's where it would drop all of its uh, its leftovers potentially. So it doesn't sleep with all of its all of the food that it's eaten. Um, I decided to have a, a monster le uh, larder, and so uh, in this case, <laughs> I have a hole, I have a cage, I'm not even going to explain this, you're probably not going to reuse something like this, this was me being very silly, <laughs> okay, um, you could have a larder that looked a lot better than that, I'm sure, an egg chamber, like whether it's eggs from aliens, whether it's eggs from um, ank egg or um, ants or anything like that, and so I just drew... Because usually egg chambers are, are odd shapes, and so I just drew something that had some odd shapes to them. It's got a bigger part, um, section to it, smaller little alcloves, and some eggs or uh, some some lava sitting there waiting to hatch. And you'll you reuse egg egg chambers for sure. Um, the rubbish dump, which again is it's kind of a duplication of something I've done before. I just drew a different one with another big hole. Um, this is just for a cave. So you'll notice we're starting to move away from what were structures that, so at about, where is it? About here, this is the 31st of January, I decided to move away from um, constructed walls and towards caves. This is the month of caves, so that's why you see a lot of other things being duplicated, but it's cave shapes. Uh, I decided to draw a stone bridge crossing a, a, a chasm or a, a crevice. It seemed like a a good point. It's a, it's the sort of thing you would use in a battle, right? Let's have a fight with um, two enemies on either side of a stone bridge. Perfect time. Particularly if there's a big, huge, long fall. Uh, a water pool in a cave. So that's just water. It's just supposed to represent water and a cave. And look, it can be connected to anything. Um, I decided I had to have a mushroom cave. So I just drew some mushrooms and I decided to stick it into a a cross juncture. Now whether you would do that or you have a dedicated room that had just one entrance to it, it's completely up to you. But let's get real, whatever you're doing with caves, you're probably going to have mushrooms in there, right? Um, golden Fountain Cave. So I decided, does anybody remember the Golden Voyages of Sinbad? Is it the Golden Voyages of Sinbad? I think it is the Golden Voyages of Sinbad. The Golden Voyages of Sinbad has a place and I've reconstructed it. This is the, the, the basic layout of the Golden Voyages of Sinbad when they go to the, um, the last, um, um, uh, the, where the gods would smile on, on, on men, uh, where there's a fountain, there's a rock, uh, there's a couple of entranceways. I believe there's a centaur, a cyclops, and a, a griffin that come and battle each other, and then, of course, Sinbad's crew have got to deal with it. So I redrew that location here, and I just called it the Golden Fountain Cave, because it, I would always want to use that kind of location. And so I've watched the movie many times. This is supposed to be steps leading up to the the pool. <laughs> uh, what do you got? I had a dungeon room with a poker table, with cards and sodas and popcorn. Describe the colourful um, cylinders on the table that appeared to be um, sweating. <laughs> Good one. Cool. Right. So we're about halfway through now. Uh, this is just a, a treasure chamber in a cave. It's just a treasure hoard. So I just drew treasure and made a, a shape for it. That's all I needed. So now I kind of got an idea of what's there. Um, this is just a crevice with no... So now, you know when they have to jump that crevice? Or, uh, well, now I have that. I've drawn that up. I know what it looks like. I can actually use this if I really wanted to. I've even decided how how far across it is, how deep it's going to be and what might be living down below. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. Um, a bird nest in a cave. Like, what would a bird, big, huge bird nest? I don't mean a small bird nest. This is supposed to represent the bird nest. I know it looks like garbage. Um, some stones, some bones, and an entranceway. And this is like a, a little cliff face facing out onto into the, the open wild. So I always felt like if you're going to have a nest in a cave, it needs to have access to the outer world. And so this is what this is supposed to represent. This is the point where you would access from as a player character but this is the side that's facing into the the wilderness from the from the cliff face um a wishing well so this here 
the Wishing Well Cave is a duplication of, again, the Golden Voyages of Sinbad, where he goes to a um, the Oracle, to see the Oracle, and I decided I needed a Wishing Well, and these are the steps leading down from the entrance, and basically there's a few rocks in there, stalactites or stalagmites or whatever the heck you call them. Uh, so I decided I'll put all that there. And I remember there being some, some debris on the ground, so I, I put that down as well. So that's just me copying that location. You can see I copied a lot of stuff. Uh, puffball crossroads. So I decided I had mushrooms. What if I just stuck a whole lot of poisonous push puffballs in the middle of a crossroad? Are the players going to go through, or are they going to turn back, or are they going to do something else? So I decided to do that. Uh, I put a black pyramid in a cave. Now, why did I do that? That's just supposed to be a pyramid, four sides. I was watching... Uh, I was watching uh, Predator versus Alien, or was it Alien versus Predator, or whatever the heck it is, I can't remember. And they had a, a huge pyramid in a cave location, so I decided to do something like that here. What is its purpose? I'm going to tell you. <laughs> Would you reuse it? I'd probably not. Crystal Cave. Now, we talked about designing giant crystal caves not so long ago, and so this is just my, my crystal cave. A tight gap. A big space to move through and lots of pointy crystals. Yep. Um, for those of you who remember, uh, what is it? Um, Return of the King. Return of the King, Lord of the Rings. This is the spider web that <sighs> Frodo got stuck in when he was being chased by the big spider. So I decided I wanted to have a big spider location. I felt like a web would be crossing over here. So you'd have to move through it or across it or walk across it. And, of course, you probably hide your spider in here somewhere out of the way. So I just duplicated that that idea that I'd seen in a movie and made that a location. Um, this is the Skull Mound Cave. Skull Mound Cave is based off an existing adventure. And this is supposed to be just a, a pile of skulls, of white skulls here, with a stone step and a couple of access points. And it's, it's actually part of an adventure about trolls that I, I saw in, a, in an adventure book. And I just redrew the basic gist of it. I didn't, draw, I didn't take that, but I just redrew, redrew the, the basic gist of it. And I put it in here. Um, crow cage and cavern. This is, so imagine you have, you know, you know what a crow cage is. It's for keeping somebody in until they die, right? So you're, you're a horrible, horrible person. Um, and I decided, well, I'm going to have some stairs leading down. I'm going to have some stairs leading up. I'm going to have a door to it, have a big open area here. But I want some cages. So I'm going to have one that's flying on the ground. So that's what I drew. And some, some of them, the ones that are circled, the circles, they're supposed to be the cages, and they're hung by uh, large metal arms from the ceiling. Um, so you can walk underneath them and, of course, stare up at the, um, the, the dying and dehydrating and starving individuals in the caves. Uh, and a pile of skulls, because of course, or, and bones, because that's what's going to eventually happen. You're going to have to empty those cages and stick new people in there. So this is the, the crow cage cabin. Uh, I think this is also part of, based off uh, an adventure that I had uh, run at some point. This is a waterfall cave. So I decided I wanted to have a waterfall and a sort of underground um, stream or a pond and sort of an, an access point um, in, a, in a cave location. Because we're still on February at this point. So I decided to draw that. What else you would do with it? I'm not too sure. Um, next, uh, a stone... Uh, stone cauldron cave so I put a cauldron over here like a witch's cauldron a couple of stalagmites or stalactites um, some rubble and I sort of thought well this is kind of the shape that you might have if you were a hag in a cave location and you were hiding from people you'd probably just have a pot and that's it everything else wouldn't be necessary I decided to have a magic gate um, cave so I put some mushrooms in there and I'd, and the big gate the big gates or big doors these are really basic ideas. I would still reuse it though. The Hydra Den. So the Hydra Den is basically, this is just a pathway leading in. These are all underwater passageways. These are, uh, these are this, this has got water running through it. And this is supposed to be the, the watery pond. So the whole room is essentially a huge pond. And there's a little bit of land that you could stand on or, or get to if you wanted to. If you could fly there or jump there. Uh, probably going to be hard to jump there. And of course, I, I stuck my I stuck my hydra down underneath the, the water surface. This is based off oh, what is this based off? 
It's based off something that I saw. I can't remember which one it is. May, maybe it's Dragon Slayer the movie. I think it's Dragon Slayer the movie. I think this is very much Dragon Slayer the movie, if I remember right. <laughs> okay. Okay, next. Um, this is a treasure chest cave. So I decided to have some water, a little bit of um, land on the other side, and I put all the treasure on that little bit. So they get across the water from the access points in the cave, which has dry land, and, uh, and hopefully whatever's in the water doesn't kill them. Um, so I decided that would be fun to do. I decided I wanted to draw a, a lava tube cave. I haven't really seen lava tube cave um, and lava tube caves before, so I just decided to make a funny shape like a, a spiral, um, like a, uh, a coral, a karu or a uh, spiral. So it's slightly spiraled. And this is just supposed to represent magma, and this is the section you could walk on. Um, I'm not very familiar with lava tubes anyway. Okay, throne cave. So I decided I wanted to have a cave with some stairs coming up to it and maybe a couple of statues and a throne uh, sitting on a, a dais. So that's what I've draw, drawn here. You're going to use throne, a throne room or a throne cave a lot of times. This is just cave crypts, okay? Putting crypts into a cave. So we've you saw that before. I was doing that before. Uh, this is just um, pod caves. I decided it would be fun to have caves that were like pods but there were there was an aspect to them that was um natural but also um manufactured so this that's why they're connected by doors and i put a few statues in there i don't know how useful that would be to you though uh this is just a tunnel crossroad a tunnel crossroad there's even no point in drawing something like this but i did it anyway um this is now we're on to the next month this is now january february march January, February, this is March now. I decided to move to castles. So drawing locations for castles was my thing. So this is an entranceway. So if you've never seen what they look like, this is roughly, you know, you have a, an access point. They're usually a funny shape. They allow for defending. You can walk along the, um, the walls. That's why the walls are so thick. There's a staircase here, and there's a few support beams. Okay, so that's the uh, bar bar. bar, bar Barbican, the Barbican. It's a castle section. Stables and a castle. So I decided let's draw some stables. So I drew some stables. You can see these are my stables here. And a, there's a trough for water. Um, I decided I wanted a map room in my castle. This is like the war room. So a big table with a map on it, some chairs around it, and some access points. Um, and then we have a, a tower. A tower is very simple. A tower is just a round room with a circular staircase going up um, and if you're not having a circular staircase then you have a different type of staircase but you reuse those sorts of things the castle gate the castle gate's really simple because the castle gate usually has either side of the main gate which would be here you would have like a portcullis here and your main gate which would be made out of wood or metal or both and um in between is sort of like the oh, what's the what's the word i can't remember off the top of my head but this was just supposed to represent what most castle gates would look like because they usually had arches in these two towers either side of the main gate so i just drew that i did a throne room so this is the old two thrones major room it's just a rectangle with some doors nothing fancy uh a castle dungeon so i drew a castle and we've talked about castle dungeons before so i drew a castle dungeon i had a cell i had some torture equipment i decided to draw in a rack uh, I decided to draw in, um, oh god, I can't remember. There's a desk here. There's something else that's supposed to be here as well. I think this is based off, I think the structure of it is based off um, The Man with the Iron Mask. There's a movie called The Man with the Iron Mask with Leonardo DiCaprio. And I think the basic place kind of looked like this, or one of them did. Yeah, it, it's, I know it's an, it's, an, it's an older movie, so I, I, <laughs> I copied their dungeon. Um, I did a chapel, and the chapel is really based off, this chapel is based, is it based off the one from Rocky, the Rocky movie, and uh, Robin Hood? I believe there was a chapel in Robin Hood, I can't remember which one, I think it was the Kevin Costner one, and I decided to draw a chapel in here. Uh, because often ca um, castles would have a, a chapel. I decided to draw in a, a kitchen that would be suitable for a castle. And these are this is supposed to be the stone area with the um, the hoods, the um, the venting hoods. 
some wooden um, tables to work on and some shelving uh, and a barrel. Um, a pantry, it's basically just another storage room but for a cave. And I decided to include a secret door. Yep, got some stairs leading down from the door and then you, the lower area, then you can access all of your goods from your shelves. Um, a castle great hall, you gotta use, I mean, you're always gonna use a castle great hall, right? Even if there isn't a major fight in here, there's bound to be a food fight. So um, we have the nobles chairs, the, the, um, their, their table, and some, some uh, extra tables and some chairs sitting around this. This is definitely from the old Robin Hood with Errol Flynn. I, I looked at that and I was like, okay, can I just redraw what they had? And they have two fireplaces either side because you can't have one fireplace on one side to keep the room warm. You've got to have two, right? <laughs> um, castle dining room. I just did another dining room. You use dining rooms all the time. It's the same sort of structure. This is what I mean by when you're doing a lot of this stuff. It's good practice, but you realize that the structure for them are almost identical for a lot of things you're trying to do. Uh, castle drawing room. So a castle drawing room is just a couple of couches, a table in the center, probably low lying, a fireplace and some access doors. And when I did the castle drawing room, I was thinking of the solar. For anybody who knows what a solar is, it's like a living room. Yep. Bedroom. Big bed. Um, with supporting um, posts, uh, we have a couch, uh, a desk, uh, a, a couple of um, dresses, an access point, and then we've got um, what is, would be probably a, a, a chest full of clothing. And this, I believe, is based off a Victorian movie, and I cannot remember the, the, for the life of me, I cannot remember it. I just copied the structure and the positioning of things from an old Victorian movie. <laughs> I know that sounds bad. Anyway, castle storage room. I decided to have it a round one. I thought, well, what about, I've done a, a rectangular one. Can I have a storage room that's sort of, you know, like a part of a tower? Um, so I did that. And then a ballroom. Ballrooms, the thing with ballrooms, they always seem to have a lot of access points, whether it's windows or doors. So that's what I've done, is it's just a big space and it's supposed to be a ballroom. Because you need to have a big space to be able to dance, otherwise you're going to crash into everything. There's no furniture in a ballroom. You know why? Because people crash into those things. It's 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 just walls, doors, and, and windows. That's it. Um, a castle library. Again, I decided I was going to have, in this case, this is supposed to be balconies up here. Um, I hadn't decided how to access it at this point, so I hadn't put a staircase in, which I probably should. Um, there really should be like a, there should be like a, a, a circular staircase that sort of comes up through here, right? Which I never, I never drew those in. If that pen's even going to work. But yeah, if I was smart, I would have drawn a circular staircase so you can access it. But I never did. Um, <clears throat> and then, of course, just a desk and some chairs in the middle. Uh, next, I decided another bathroom. We've got a, a round tub this time, not a square, not a rectangular tub. A couple of sh um, um, shelves for stuff and a basin, obviously. You don't need that much. This is copied off a picture I found of a bathroom in a real castle in, I think, in Denmark or Sweden or I can't remember. Somewhere in Europe. Um, anyway, this is supposed to be a castle uh, cellar. And this image, this is supposed to represent barrels lying on their side, uh, sitting on a... I guess a runner, a couple of runners, either side. And this is deliberately copied from a picture I found of a real cellar in a kitchen. <laughs> uh, this is a castle lavatory. I had never found a real lavatory for a castle until one day I, I, I came across an image. And basically, <laughs> it's like communal pooing and shitting. You sit beside a whole lot of other people who are also doing their business, and it's basically just a big, huge seat with a hole in it, and the holes just <laughs> just go down into a bucket or down into a, a drain of some kind. But usually, it's just a bucket, and they just remove the bucket underneath the seat. Hilarious. Uh, next, this is supposed to represent an ice house. A castle would often have an ice house if it's really big. It would be situated away from everywhere else. It would be at a cold location. They did things to insulate that um, that that ice house, and they would have at the end of it there was usually a a big box in it, and this is where the the things they need to be kept cold were kept. So ice would be stored in this big box and have insulation in it, so the melt um, the ice wouldn't melt too quickly. 
and uh, it would help keep the whole room cool. And also it needed to stay, um, it would be usually quite damp, but they would try to keep it as, as dry as possible. Otherwise food or anything you put in here to keep it cold, when you're making ice cream or drinks and so forth would go off. Much to my surprise, they did make ice cream uh, back in the day. So, and that was the that was the end of my um, my venture into this on this book. And then I started a second book. So, for those of you who are wondering, oh, what's the deal with doing maps? It starts with a piece of paper, a pen, and a pencil, or a pencil and a pen. That's really where it starts, and that's it. And they may never get used. Uh, or that specific one might never get used. But once you've drawn maps of different locations, you can usually redraw them again, I find. And if you find a map that you really like, then maybe you'll go and use something like Dungeon Scrawl to, to tidy it up. Um, I will give you a link to Dungeon Scrawl. Dungeon Scrawl is the thing I use. I don't use anything fancy because I don't use a virtual tabletop. So I couldn't give a toss about whether it looks um, pretty. All I need it to do is to function. So uh, dungeon scroll. Dungeon scroll is a free is free. You you can get a paid version, but it doesn't cost you a thing to use it. It has had a whole lot of updates. I am not going to show you how to use it today. I can assure you, but uh, I will put the link in here, and uh, you can go and play with it and see what you think. This is not promoted. I'm not not getting paid to, to promote their product. Okay. The only reason I use Dungeon Scroll is it's because it's simple to use, and I, I don't have to think too much about it. It's it's just there, and it, it has a sort of an old style feel to it. So this is this is it here. Old school dungeon maps made easy, and you can draw a lot of different types of maps with it. There's different types of wall shapes. Um, the interface is a little bit hard to get used to initially, but it's it's not as bad as trying to deal with something like Photoshop or some of the other um, map drawing software out there. And if you're just doing it for your own game, um, I think this is probably the one of the better ways to go. Dungeon Scroll is super, super easy. You know, you can grab whatever, you, whatever type of um, uh, thing you want and you can just draw in and it, uh, it, it'll pop out what you want. So there, there's a wall there. I can do that again. So if you wanted to have stone walls, but you don't want to have that sort of cave look, you can do this sort of thing. As you can just draw out, uh, oops, let's do that there. Whoops, let's undo, undo. No, I'm not going to bother undoing. I'm just going to do this very fast. I can't be bothered. Um, I just want to go <laughs> get out of this <laughs> very hot room. Um, there. And then you can put in a door if you want. But yeah, basically drawing up a map or of a room is, is not that hard. Um, and then of course, if you don't want that sort of thing and you want more of a cave, then you can go with more of a cave. You can change the, the way the, the, the layering is working. Um, new layer and you can have that sort of effect. Uh, you can have uh, oh, that sort of effect. Uh, what's another one? Oh, I think this is this is more if you want to go old school, you can go old school and you can change the way it looks a lot of different ways. So you've got a few options. So yeah, that's uh, Dungeon Scroll. And then of course it's got assets and images you can plop, plop in. You can put in, you can put in all sorts of bits and pieces in here if I can even find them. Um, yeah, you can move them around and position them where you want them like that. Okay, all right, so, uh, yeah, so to have a play around with something like that and see what you think. But most, as I said, most of my maps are, are hand-drawn, and then, of course, they're going onto a battle grid, usually, so I'm not using, you know, anything else particularly fancy. EA, EAI Education, um, Slide and Measure, uh, Compass Rulers are handy tools also. Yes. Yes, definitely. I agree. Compasses and um, and sliding rules for sure. All right. Okay. Interesting. All right. I'm going to finish up this because I'm cooking in this room and I'm not feeling that well now. 
<laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna take two off. But do you draw map locations for your role playing games? Yes, sixty eight percent. Oh, that's a lot of people. Sometimes eighteen percent. That's all fine. Uh, no, twelve percent. Just watching zero percent. Sixteen votes. Okay. All right. So for those of you who are wondering, will I ever draw maps on my channel again using software? Yes, I will. But I'll draw it by hand first. Because I always feel like if I draw it by hand, even if it's a, just a quick rough sketch, I've got a better grasp of what I'm doing. Otherwise, you feel like you, once you start mucking around with software, you've got to go back and undo things. And you like, okay, it's better to get all the roughing out done on a piece of paper and a, with, a piece of pencil, uh, with a pencil and a rubber. Um, eraser, for those of you who think that a rubber is a, um, uh, a condom wasn't referring to that. Although you could probably use a condom to rub out pencil. I'm sure it would work. <laughs> anyway, yes, I will cover that sort of thing in the future, but not today. Not today. Um, I'm going to get rid of this. Get rid of this. Get rid of this. Okay, cool, cool. All right, I'm going to get going. Um, all the best with your drawing and your map making and your location creation. And uh, yeah, just remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just need to be good enough to do the job. They're all pretty much the same, really, when you, when you think about it. Anyway, so um, huge thank you to all of my patrons. Thank you to everybody who, who's who been here in the chat responding to the, the poll. I do appreciate it, watching and listening. Uh, I want to say, a, again, uh, without my patrons, this program, the Game Master preparation, uh, the uh, running adventures, uh, the covering monster lore and the monster workshops and the character building and, and the rules stuff. None of that's possible, really, with just YouTube uh, revenue. It's down to the patrons supporting me to make sure that I keep coming back and doing that because it takes a lot of preparation and time. And um, time is valuable, unfortunately. It is it's something that you can't just keep giving indefinitely. And I've discovered that to be the problem uh, more and more. So really do thank you. Now, for those of you who have been in the chat, I want to thank Awareness, Noroak, Shiner81. Hello. I didn't notice you were here. You only just commented now. Thank you. Um, F. Huber, thank you for being here. Uh, Mershak, uh, who I believe Mershak is a patron. I'm pretty sure Mershak is a patron. Derp, who was hanging out with us for a little while as well. Yes, yes, the Clockwork Observatory is supposed to look like a mushroom head. <laughs> um, big Kid, who was hanging out with us as well. Really do appreciate those of you who commented in the chat. It makes a big difference. So wherever you are in the world, whether it be the morning, the afternoon, the night, the wee wee early morning, please look after yourself, your family and your friends. Be nice to your neighbours. And hey, I knew it. I, I keep forgetting, uh, Mershak. I keep forgetting. Sorry about that. But as I said, try drawing your own maps. Even if you don't use them, it's good practice. And hey, till next time, keep rolling those 20s. <laughs>